to present the, this work that uh, I've been doing together with my colleagues uh, Jorge Destuni and, uh, well, Fernando Yaramil. He uh, did some of the preliminary work for, for this. And uh, we're from the Department of Physical Geography and Quaternary Geology uh, in the Hydrology Group. Okay, and, uh, well, our work is financed through BEAM, EUKIN, and another uh, project, CLEAVE. So, what we were looking at here is, at a catchment scale, do wetlands play a role in reducing nutrients, uh, nutrient loading to the Baltic Sea? Okay, so um, I gave a presentation recently and this is it. I think uh, you guys are pretty familiar, I'm not going to go through the details, but um, here, there's evidence, there's our articles are published on local effects, that wetlands are shown to have local effects um, and they re remove a certain amount of nutrients from, from wa uh, water uh, flow to the sea. But what about wetlands regional or landscape effects? If you have more wetlands in a landscape, does that lead to more nutrient retention? That's the question we're looking at here. Okay, so for this work, data was gathered from various sources. I've used the um, Swedish Land Cover data set, uh, SMD for those familiar. And I also looked at the Swedish Wetlands Inventory from the uh, Naturvårdsverket, uh, Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. For nutrient retention, um, I've taken this from the fifth, or PLC5, uh, and this is from uh, that SME at uh, Swedish Environmental Emissions Data, a database for Swedish reporting internationally. And um, the nutrient retention, what we mean by retention, is, is this. It's the load in to the catchment minus the load out at the sea and then divided by the load in. So that means it's between zero and one. Uh, zero, no retention, one, maximum retention. Okay. So, more on the data sources. Um, we looked at the North Baltic River Basin District and the South Baltic River Basin District. And here you can see the retention for these two, well, for the, for the various catchments in the two river basin districts. Blue very low along the coast, and uh, red somewhat uh, the, the maximum and quite often then inland. But there's differing patterns. So we looked at this data, and that's, that's what we were working on. Um, here, our method, there are different kinds of wetlands, and these are the kinds of wetlands we, we were looking at. This is what's available in the Swedish land cover data. Then the nutrient sources, again in the PLC5 data, you've got all types of sources, diffuse and point sources and so on. And then we, we separated out some of these to look at separately, to see if there were different characteristics in retention, depending on the kind of source. And then these are the analyses we looked at. So for the, the main one we were looking at is the wetland area within a catchment, divided by the, the catchment area. Okay? We also looked at the transport distance to the sea along the flow network. And we even took into consideration, we did another analysis where we took into consideration that downstream wetlands might have an effect. So not just the catchment, but this catchment and all the wetlands to the sea. We looked at the number of wetlands and we selected some of these wetlands and uh, compared with all of them. Bogs, for example, are known to release nutrients. As an example. The other thing we did was we divided up our analysis into three zones or three categories. Uh, the coastal catchments, the, the <coughs> large lake catchments, this is Lake Mellern, Lake Vettern, right there, and then the catchments in between this large lake system and the coastal area. And the results. 
one and a half minutes. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this is the wetland to catchment area ratio. And as you can see, uh, the R squared, nothing, no results. So we, we cannot see a relationship between more wetlands and more retention. But we can see a relationship between lake system and, and retention. So the large lakes provide more retention. We also looked at the distance to the sea, and here there's a relationship, reasonably high R squared. So the further the distance to the sea, the more retention. Uh, and then here, uh, downstream wetlands. So all the catchments to the sea, no relationship. Okay? So wetlands don't seem to have an effect in catchments or for retention. Uh, at a catchment scale. Remember that there's a local scale effect, but not this catchment scale effect. So then the question is, where do we put our wetlands if we want to re reduce nutrient loading to the sea? Um, it's no good putting wetlands up here, because they flow through melon. A melon down here is not threatened by eutrophication. So if you want to protect the Baltic Sea, you don't put your wetlands up here. If you want to protect Upper Lake Mallard, then you do. But down here, uh, maybe a priority area if you want to, to put wetlands. Um, and then we have to look at the, is the local effect significant enough? So, uh, yeah, okay, I'd better, I'd better finish up on that. Um, rapid conclusions, but um, I can explain that a little okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.